Now, count on two, live and local in the Low Country. This is News 2 Midday. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks so much for watching this extended edition of News 2 Midday. Happy Tuesday. I'm Temple Ricky. An emergency meeting today for Mount Pleasant Town Council. They plan to talk about temporarily allowing new areas for restaurants to offer outdoor dining. Those areas include parking lots and council also plans to talk about town parks, all of which reopened to the public last Friday. Sullivan's Island is getting rid of restrictions on May 12th. For the next week, checkpoints will still be in place from 8 in the morning until 5 at night. Restrictions are in place for anyone on the beach. This means you have to limit your group to less than three people unless you are a family and you also have to keep moving. The Isle of Palms is lifting restrictions one week earlier than planned. City Council made the decision during an emergency meeting Monday night. News 2's Olivia Parsons explains these changes go into effect tomorrow. Changes are also in place for restrictions on Folly Beach. Checkpoints are now in place from 7 in the morning till 7 at night. City Council decided last night that guests will be allowed at hotels and short-term rentals starting on May 12th. They originally were not allowed until May 29th. Researchers say this could lead to a wider achievement gap between wealthier and lower income students. Charleston County School District says capital projects are back on track despite the pandemic. CCSD has a number of capital projects in the works. News 2 Katie Turner explains how they plan to keep these projects right on track. A local coroner says a woman who was involved in an alligator attack on Kiowa Island died from drowning. The coroner adds that the death of 57 year old Cynthia Covert was accidental. Witnesses say an alligator dragged Covert into the water Friday afternoon after she approached the gator in a lagoon. A third fire in two years at St. Andrew's Church in Mount Pleasant. Investigators say Monday's fire was caused by friction as crews worked on part of the building. Firefighters say smoke and flames were coming out of the roof when they arrived. Thankfully, no one was hurt in yesterday's fire. The global coronavirus death toll passed a quarter of a million Monday, according to Johns Hopkins University. A new COVID-19 antibody test authorized by the FDA. The test made by a New Jersey company is the first to receive independent validation from the federal government. The test can tell if people have been infected with COVID-19 and have recovered from it. Public health officials say other tests currently available are not accurate. A cruise ship performer from Myrtle Beach is back home after being stuck overseas during the pandemic. Our sister station in Myrtle Beach talked with her about her experience at sea. Myrtle Beach to overseas and think Martin is now in quarantine at her home for the next 14 days. She says thousands of cruise members from other countries are still on board waiting to get home. 12 the Food and Drug Administration is in emergency mode. Treatment approvals that usually take years are happening in just a matter of days to help coronavirus patients. Ashley Osborne spoke to two kidney specialists who are using some of those emergency therapies. Postpartum Support Charleston is hosting online support groups every Sunday at 3 o'clock. And they also have virtual coffee chats on Mondays and Fridays. We have more information, including other support groups on our website. Just head to countonto.com. Stick with us. You're watching News 2 Midday. The subject of masks is a subject of controversy. Private companies like airlines and retailers are now requiring customers to cover their faces. State and local governments who have pushed to require masks in public have faced an intense outcry. NBC's Dan Shinneman has the story. For Thursday and Friday, highs in the 70s, Temple. Hey, we'll make sure to bring that water if you go out for a socially distanced walk. And thanks so much for joining us on News 2 Midday. The news continues online at countonto.com and coming up again at 4 o'clock. We'll see you then.